Hi, it's Michael Jam, and we have a bonus podcast episode for you today. Uh, as many of you know, I'm working on a collection of personal essays called The Paper Orchestra, and I was recently invited to read one of them aloud at a public event called Strong Words. And so the story I wrote and read is called Merry Jewish Christmas. I hope you enjoy it. You're listening to Screenwriters Need to Hear This with Michael Jam. Merry Jewish Christmas, and it's an excerpt from my upcoming book, A Paper Orchestra. Growing up Jewish, I learned early on that Christmas was the greatest party I'd never be invited to. <laughs> there would be no Santa coming down my chimney, no chestnuts roasting on an open fire, no house wrapped in twinkling lights. Damn, they made Christmas tantalizing. <laughs> no wonder Joseph and Mary were camped out on the neighbor's lawn. They were hoping to get a ticket inside. <laughs> but sadly, the Christmas rules were very clear. No Jews allowed. <laughs> yeah. The best I could do was hunker down until January 1st, when Baby New Year would shove Baby Jesus out of the way. <laughs> a baby fight, that's what I was pinning my head for. <laughs> As a child, I recall going to the supermarket where Have Yourself a Very Merry Christmas played on a loudspeaker. Oh, that heartbreakingly beautiful song. My people were already predisposed to depression. Did we really need this as well? <laughs> a chef with a pension for cookie-based architecture built a glorious gingerbread house the size of a fire hydrant with its gumdrop-tiled roof and frosting frosted windows. This wasn't a mere representation of Christmas. It was Christmas itself. I wanted to live in it. <laughs> if only I could shrink down to the size of a green army man. And crawl inside, I'd barricade the door by licking peppermints together, <laughs> sticking them like cement blocks. Anyone who dared poke their head in would get a sharpened candy cane to the eyeball. A warning to any would-be intruder that this Christmas Jew was here to stay. <laughs> but I wasn't allowed to linger, as my mother was in a hurry to buy ingredients for our upcoming holiday dinner. Hanukkah. <laughs> she grabbed my arm and pulled me to the Jewish culinary destination known as the potato bin. <laughs> I'm making latkes, said my mother, as she carefully hand-selected each bland, lifeless rock that would roll downhill into our stomachs. <laughs> Somewhere along the way, my ancestors had managed to take a perfectly good breakfast, the pancake, remove the delicious doughy part, and replace it with an edible tuber fried in grease. <laughs> And we're going to top them with applesauce, she happily added. Applesauce? What am I, 80? <laughs> Frosty the snowman, standing at the checkout aisle, wasn't making me any less jealous. With his corncob pipe and his eyes of coal, he was scrappy and delightful. <laughs> what religion would one claim him for our own? <laughs> Is Frosty Christian, I asked my mother. Are you kidding me? He probably drives a Camaro. <laughs> And she went back to gold and turned to take the down the conveyor belt. <laughs> to be honest, this whole Hanukkah thing needed rethinking. Part of the problem is that you couldn't hype its arrival because it never felt on the same day. The Jewish calendar is lunar, not solar. Sometimes Hanukkah would land near Christmas. Other times it came shockingly early. Hey, did you know Hanukkah falls on November 30th this year? November? Oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> As it stood, I'd have to admire Christmas from afar, until one eve, one foggy Christmas eve, when I managed to experience Christmas as an insider. It happened while on vacation in the Amish country of Pennsylvania. It was my father's idea to introduce us to culture, instead of taking us someplace good like Disney World. <laughs> we checked in at a nearby resort that was the vacation spot in 1958. <laughs> Once upscale and chic, the hotel had fallen into disrepair. Yes, a fire roared in the lobby, but I can only imagine it was fueled by a mountain of state-issued safety violations. <laughs> Luckily, whatever money they saved in sprinkler upgrades that might save our lives was spent on Christmas decorations that brought wonder to my Hebrew eyes. <laughs> Flecks of silver and gold were splayed everywhere, and they had a name for it. Tinsel. <laughs> I learned other words, too. The aging pianist in the lobby sang of magical creatures that were half reptile and half bird called turtle doves. 
They sounded slow and peaceful, and I dreamed of keeping one in the tank. <laughs> there was a log called a Yule, and in a bowl there was a nog. The pleasure was insane. On Christmas morning, we awoke to find fresh snowfall on the ground, just like the movies promised. My sister and I got quickly dressed and raced downstairs to the, to the Christmas tree like you're supposed to. And there, handing out presents to a horde of waiting children was the big man himself, Jolly Saint Nick. Go get one, urged my mother. But we're Jewish. He doesn't know that. He's probably drunk. Go before he <laughs> My mother nudged me. And I approached just as Santa was being handed a fresh stack of presents from one of the elves, who I now recognized as our busboy from last night's dinner. <laughs> I said nothing, though. We were both keeping secrets. <laughs> Admittedly, I took pleasure receiving a present from Santa Claus, and the fact that I might be depriving a deserving Christian child just because he was late getting to the lobby didn't bother me in the slightest. <laughs> Did that make me a bad person? Or had I already crossed that line when I told Santa my name is Timmy? <laughs> I rushed to a quiet part of the lobby to unwrap my Christmas bounty. I was certain mine contained the perfect gift. The moment before unwrapping any gift is always magical because that's when the present is at its highest potential. It could be anything you wanted it to be. I suppose the same could be said about a Jewish child about to experience Christmas for the first time. Just imagine. And now imagine my disappointment when I discovered what lied beneath the wrapping. It was a bargain rack board game that the hotel picked up at the thrift store. It was like Santa had known all along, and he knifed me right in the Jewish gut. <laughs> and although I don't recall the exact name of this board game, for the sake of things, let's just call it Abject Disappointment by Parker Brothers. <laughs> I had betrayed my heritage by pretending to be Christian and for what, a lousy board game? To this day, Christmas morning holds an unsettling stillness for me. When most of the population is inside unwrapping presents and spreading good cheer, we Jews wander the city, just like Joseph and Mary, searching for a destination that will take us in. Usually it's a Chinese restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> so that's exactly what Cynthia and I did with our daughters on Christmas Day. It's strange to have a restaurant almost entirely to yourself. Even if you're with someone, there's a loneliness to it. You can hear it in the silence. At least that's how I felt when our mushu vegetables arrived. <laughs> we sat at a window table, staring outside where not even a mouse was stirring. And closer to the door was an older couple who had grappled with a similar feeling. But order the noodles instead. For a moment, the woman and I made eye contact. On any other day, we may have both looked away, but this was Christmas. Even though we were strangers, I think we wanted to share a feeling of connection, or at least acknowledge our sense of isolation. She gave me a smile that said, eh, what are you going to do? <laughs> I shrugged, dipped my egg roll in duck sauce. What else could be done? <laughs> when our meal was over, I ordered a serving of mooncake. Not much, just a little sweetness to help enjoy the day. As I ushered my family out the door, I set it down on the woman's table. Merry Jewish Christmas, I said. Yeah. Merry Jewish Christmas to you, too. Aww. Aww, yeah. <laughs> Hi, it's Michael. Thank you so much for listening. I hope you enjoyed that story. Again, it's from my upcoming collection of personal essays called The Paper Orchestra. It's uh, going to be published soon. And I hope you will consider joining my newsletter so that when it's out, you can go get it. I'm not going to spam you. I'm not going to sell you a bunch of stuff. You can unsubscribe whenever you want. It's just to be notified of my public events and, and things that I'm working on. So to sign up, just go to michaeljammon.com slash story, enter your email address. And again, I'm not going to, I'm not going to sell it or trade it or do all this nasty stuff to your email. It's safe with me. All right. Thank you so much for considering it and uh, Merry Jewish Christmas. Mm -hmm.